times, the greatest need is not the need we can read with our physical eyes or hear with our ears. The greatest need is an invisible one, but one that is always felt. And that need is for the soul to recognize its true hunger and fill that hunger with the true supply. The hunger of every man, woman, and child is to know God. The French philosopher, mathematician, Blaise Pascal, said that in each human there is a God-shaped blank. And if we attempt to fill that blank with anything other than God, the blank remains. It is God-shaped, and only God can fit that particular area. The hunger that each one of us has may find outlets in various ways. Sometimes we try to fill that particular hunger that isn't always identified as a hunger, but is, we fill it with various things that are of the earth. Many things good in themselves, but not quite fitting for the God-shaped blank. Jesus reminds us in the scriptures this evening to come aside, to come away to a lonely place. And by lonely we don't mean loneliness, but an exclusive place where there is quiet. All of us have need of quiet. The deepest needs of our soul can only be fulfilled when we come to the quiet. Some people are afraid of quiet. Even though they may not know they're afraid of it, the way we can identify our certain fear of quiet is when we have quiet time, what do we do? Do we get fidgety? When we come into adoration of the Blessed Sacrament, many times we're not comfortable with quiet. We have to have books around us with prescribed prayers good in themselves, but try this, you who are blessed and privileged to be husbands and wives. Start reading to each other in each other's more intimate moments and see how well that goes. Not very well. Heart speaks to heart in the quiet moment. Not always an eloquence that other people would acknowledge to be eloquent. But God doesn't look for eloquence from us. He wants our hearts. He has everything else, but He doesn't have our hearts. We cannot give God anything, nor can we serve God in the sense God has no needs. So serving God is a little bit of a misnomer in one sense. Jesus put it this way, What you do to the least of my brothers and sisters, you do to me. We serve God in His people, but we don't serve God directly because God has no particular needs that we can fulfill, except He has imposed a need on Himself called a need for us. Do you believe if you were the only boy in the world and the only girl in the world, like the old song said, nothing else would matter in the world today God would go on loving you in the same old way. God has chosen you for himself, and you satisfy something in the heart of God that no one else can satisfy. Do you understand that? You are a delight to God. Now, in the family, nobody may be telling you you're a delight. In fact, they might quite tell you the opposite. But God looked at you the day you were born because He had anticipated that from all eternity and heaven held its breath and delighted that one of God's images was now in the world. 
But if that basic and simple profound message was not conveyed to you ever since then, or even once from that moment of birth, then life becomes drudgery. Life becomes difficult when it comes to understanding God's relationship with us. God created you for himself. He expects you to come aside and cultivate that personal union with him. Develop an intimacy with God where you can speak your heart to him. No matter how wretched that heart has been, no matter how sinful your past has been, if you speak it to God, remember, you are not telling him something he does not already know fully. Too many people live in shame and guilt. It is no good. I will offer you something tonight that hopefully will assist you in advancing in union with God. The one thing in your life that you probably would never think of giving praise to God for is your sin. I ask you, please give praise and thanks to God for your sins. Does that cause a little question mark to rise up in you? Hopefully it does. And why am I saying that? Well, a greater authority than I said it once, St. Therese, the little flower. She said, give praise to God for your sins. Thank Him for them. Why? Because he and he only can bring your greatest good out of what you would call your greatest garbage. God brings good out of all things to those that love him. We show our love for God when we praise him. I am not saying praise your sin. Praise God that he and he alone can use the leftovers in your life and bring something magnificent out of it. How many people have had splendid conversions? What preceded their splendid conversion? Their horrendous sins. If they didn't have the horrendous sin, they may not have come to the splendid conversion. I am not saying go out and sin wildly in order to have a splendid conversion, I'm just saying that the fact is, many who had a disastrous life, God met them in the disaster and transformed them to know the sweetness of the Lamb of God. Sadly, a lot of people only know the despair of sin, but don't know the sweetness of mercy. And it's very simple. Don't focus on sin. Look to the Lord. In Him there is no disappointment. In Him there is no discouragement. In Him there is hope. Only in God is my soul at rest. From Him alone comes my salvation. Elevate your expectations of God and lower your expectations of your spouse and your children and your parents and your in-laws who are now outlaws. Sorry, I didn't mean to say that about everyone's, but it may happen in some situations. Lower the expectations of others who are in your life in a significant way. Elevate your expectations of God who is in your life in the most significant way and watch how life will change. When we don't expect much from others and they don't give much, we will not be as disappointed. If somebody is waiting for their birthday and their anniversary to be remembered, disaster is going to strike. God is going to allow your dearly beloved spouse to forget your birthday and your anniversary all in one year to cure that little thing within you that's gnawing away, looking for attention. Heightened expectations of humans spells a little bit of disaster. Then when our expectations are lowered and humans remember us, isn't it a wonderful surprise? God, who is my...